January 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible. Genesis, chapters 44 and 45 from the Old Testament. He instructed the servant who was over his household, fill the sacks of the men with as much food as they can carry and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack. Then put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the youngest one's sack along with the money for his grain. He did as Joseph instructed. When morning came, the men and their donkeys were sent off. They had not gone very far from the city when Joseph said to the servant, who was over his household, Pursue the men at once. When you overtake them, say to them, Why have you repaid good with evil? Doesn't my master drink from this cup and use it for divination? You have done wrong. When the man overtook them, he spoke these words to them. They answered him, Why does my Lord say such things? Far be it from your servants to do such a thing. Look, the money that we found in the mouths of our sacks, we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. Why then would we steal silver or gold from your master's house? If one of us has it, he will die, and the rest of us will become the Lord's slaves. He replied, you have suggested your own punishment. The one who has it will become my slave, but the rest of you will go free. So each man quickly lowered his sack to the ground and opened it. Then the man searched. He began with the oldest and finished with the youngest. The cup was found in Benjamin's sack. They all tore their clothes. Then each man loaded his donkey and they returned to the city. So Judah and his brothers came back to Joseph's house. He was still there, and they threw themselves to the ground before him. Joseph said to them, What did you think you were doing? Don't you know that a man like me can find out things like this by divination? Judah replied, What can we say to my Lord? What can we speak? How can we clear ourselves? God has exposed the sin of your servants. We are now my Lord's slaves, we and the one in whose possession the cup was found. But Joseph said, Far be it from me to do this. The man in whose hand the cup was found will become my slave. But the rest of you may go back to your father in peace. Then Judah approached him and said, My Lord, Please allow your servant to speak a word with you. Please do not get angry with your servant, for you are just like Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servants, Do you have a father or a brother? We said to my Lord, We have an aged father, and there is a young boy who was born when our father was old. The boy's brother is dead. He is the only one of his mother's sons left, and his father loves him. Then you told your servants, Bring him down to me so I can see him. We said to my Lord, The boy cannot leave his father. If he leaves his father, his father will die. But you said to your servants, If your youngest brother does not come down with you, you will not see my face again. When we returned to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. Then our father said, Go back and buy us a little food. But we replied, We cannot go down there. If our youngest brother is with us, then we will go, for we won't be permitted to see the man's face if our youngest brother is not with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife gave me two sons. The first disappeared, and I said, He has surely been torn to pieces. I have not seen him since. If you take this one from me too and an accident happens to him, then you will bring down my gray hair and tragedy to the grave. So now when I return to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us, his very life is bound up in his son's life. When he sees the boy is not with us, he will die, and your servants will bring down the gray hair of your servant, our father, in sorrow to the grave. Indeed, your servant pledged security for the boy with my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then I will bear the blame before my father all my life. So now please, let your servant remain as my lord's slave instead of the boy. 
As for the boy, let him go back with my brothers. For how can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? I couldn't bear to see my father's pain. Joseph was no longer able to control himself before all his attendants, so he cried out, Make everyone go out from my presence. No one remained with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. He wept loudly. The Egyptians heard it, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? His brothers could not answer him because they were dumbfounded before him. Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be upset and do not be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. For these past two years there has been a famine in the land, and for five more years there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God sent me ahead of you to preserve you on the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it is not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me an advisor to Pharaoh, lord over all his household, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Now go up to my father quickly and tell him, This is what your son Joseph says, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You will live in the land of Goshen, and you will be near me. You, your children, your grandchildren, your flocks, your herds, and everything you have. I will provide you with food there, because there will be five more years of famine. Otherwise you would become poor, you, your household, and everyone who belongs to you. You and my brother Benjamin can certainly see with your own eyes that I really am the one who speaks to you. So tell my father about all my honor in Egypt and about everything you have seen, but bring my father down here quickly. Then he threw himself on the neck of his brother Benjamin and wept, and Benjamin wept on his neck. He kissed all of his brothers and wept over them. After this, his brothers talked with him. Now it was reported in the household of Pharaoh, Joseph's brothers have arrived. It pleased Pharaoh and his servants. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do this, load your animals, and go to the land of Canaan. Get your father and your households and come to me. Then I will give you the best land in Egypt, and you will eat the best of the land. You are also commanded to say, do this. Take for yourselves wagons from the land of Egypt, for your little ones and for your wives. Bring your father and come. Don't worry about your belongings, for the best of all the land of Egypt will be yours. So the sons of Israel did as he said. Joseph gave them wagons as Pharaoh had instructed, and he gave them provisions for the journey. He gave sets of clothes to each one of them, but to Benjamin he gave three hundred pieces of silver and five sets of clothes. To his father he sent the following, ten donkeys loaded with the best products of Egypt, and ten female donkeys loaded with grain, food, and provisions for his father's journey. Then he sent his brothers on their way, and they left. He said to them, As you travel, don't be overcome with fear. So they went up from Egypt and came to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. They told him, Joseph is alive, and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. Jacob was stunned, for he did not believe them. But when they related to him everything Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to transport him, their father Jacob's spirit revived. Then Israel said, Enough! My son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Oh God, I so love this story. <sighs> Joseph and Judah and Israel and... Ah, so many awesome things going on, and I also love kind of in the background, we're watching Pharaoh, who's not a believer in, in you, he's a believer of many gods, many of the Egyptian gods, watch all this unfold, and at the end of the story, he blesses Joseph and his family. Kind of awesome. 
But I think my favorite part in here is in chapter 45, uh, verses right around 7, 8, when Judah has just laid down his heart and said, I messed up. I sold my brother into slavery and now all of this has come full circle and I'm going to lay down my life. Um, and it was just amazing watching that transformation of the Judah we saw going all the way back to messing around with Tamar and getting her pregnant and, and uh, selling his brother into slavery and, and now to this. And I think it just speaks volumes, God, of how much you can change a person's life, how, how in control you are how powerful you are and how with a heart from God um, we are changed people and that's that's pretty crazy awesome but I also love how Joseph responds he says you didn't do anything wrong let me be really clear it was God who sent me here to Egypt and now look at what I've been able to do I've been able to deliver all these people from starvation and now I'm able to do the same thing for my family all because of God and he just keeps giving you God all of the praise and all of the glory and all of the honor in the face of all the things he's been through the past almost two dozen years and so today and every day of my life God I just want to give you praise and I want to give you honor and I want it to be all about you and not about me You know all the things that are going on in my life and the things that I think aren't going so well and the things that I think are going so well. And yet in your mind, they are all good. <laughs> they are all uh, working together to what you need them to work for. Even as I stumble through reading your word in, in these videos uh, and want to record them and re-record <laughs> them many times and try and get them perfect, it doesn't it doesn't matter what matters is what you will do with these videos and who they'll reach and then what your word is going to say to those people and that's the only thing that matters you will take this project and make it good and I think that that's just pretty incredible so tuck away in my heart what Joseph said when when he truly had an opportunity to because of his power to destroy his family. And not once did that thought cross his mind. Instead, he gave all glory to you. And there wasn't even a conversation about forgiveness. There was just this incredible homecoming and, and weeping of reconciliation. Tuck those verses into my heart today. Allow me to always remember that no matter what is going on, all glory goes to you, whether I think it's good or bad or anything else. It's all for your glory, God. Thank you for sharing these amazing, rich stories with us. You know, they happened thousands and thousands of years ago. But these people are just like us. The same emotions, the same situations, set in a different time. But they're us. And thank you for sharing their stories with us. In your son's name we pray. Amen.